In February 2020, I set myself a challenge to complete an Ironman triathlon with as little as five months of training. Due to Corona, that Ironman got cancelled, so I set myself an even tougher challenge to complete a double Ironman in September. But as it turned out, the training load was just way too much for my body and I became overtrained, so I, I, I could not finish the Ultraman. Now, even though I never finished either one of these triathlons, my progression and development during those training months was pretty significant, especially in swimming. So this video is all about how my swimming progressed and how I went from being able to swim only a few pool lengths to being able to swim 10 kilometers in open water. Before I started training for the Ironman, I had practically zero experience with swimming. I had done one sprint triathlon a year earlier, and to prepare for that, I did maybe 20 swimming sessions. But before that, I can't even remember a time when I would have actually swam laps in a pool. And it showed. After just one to two pool lengths, I felt exhausted, lightheaded, and was gasping for air. And this is actually a really common problem for rookie swimmers. I think there were a few key things I did to overcome these rookie mistakes. By slowing down my speed, it was easier to focus on technique and simultaneously it was less exhausting, so I didn't feel that out of breath. By swimming frequently, I was able to relax in water. See, when you're a rookie swimmer and you try to breathe underwater or in water, your body just goes into this panic mode because it's a highly unnatural thing to do. However, swimming frequently enough familiarizes your body with this highly unnatural way of breathing and finds you're able to relax and then uh, uh, breathing becomes easier. And within a month, my swimming already became a lot more effortless and, and even fun. Something amazing has happened. The longest distance I've ever swam continuously is 400 meters. And all of a sudden, I just swam 800 meters. It just, it just clicked. At the time, I was swimming according to a generic training plan I had bought online. My training plan included two types of swims. First, I had aerobic endurance swims, which were low intensity sessions aimed to ensure that I could easily swim the Ironman distance on race day and still have lots of energy left for the ride and run. And then there were the speed endurance swims, which uh, involved effort at or above race pace, and they aimed to build my sustainable speed for race day. In retrospect, the plan was a bit too advanced for me. I mean, one of the requirements for the plan was that you're able to swim 2000 meters. Um, I wasn't and training above my skill level was uh, often quite unmotivating. I dreaded each swim workout because they were so tough. But yeah, I pushed on and training was going okay. But then Corona hit. And this meant that all the swimming pools closed down and I wasn't able to swim at all. But I had two solutions for this. First, I started doing dry land swim workouts, which sounds funny, but it just means I tried to stimulate the muscles used in swimming with bands and weights. This probably did prevent my swimming muscles from deteriorating completely, but it did become quite dull, quite fast, and in the end I don't think it was that useful. Second, I decided I would start doing open water swimming instead of pool swimming. The problem was that the water was still freezing, about 6 degrees Celsius, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me. So I bought a thick winter wetsuit and... Yeah. I bought a winter wetsuit so that I could go and swim in the freezing cold sea. Let's see if this is a good idea. Also, I might need to put this on a bit better. How am I supposed to breathe with this? How the hell does this work? I'm sweating like a pig in this one. I'm just floating here. This is almost enjoyable. Why did I not bring goggles? I also started taking ice cold baths to acclimatize myself to cold water. My idea was that if I got used to really cold water, I could start swimming in the sea without a wetsuit. It, it, it was a nice plan, but a rather useless one, because after just a month of doing this, the seawater suddenly warmed up from like 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius in a matter of one week. And I was easily able to swim in it and simultaneously pools around the city opened up again. So, I mean, yeah, my winter wetsuit became totally 
useless. And but at this point, my open water swimming really kicked off. The first and probably the most important thing I did was that I bought a high quality wetsuit. Morning coffee. So today I'm here at the beautiful Kuusjärvi and I'm here to finally test a high quality wetsuit. <sighs> I mean, yes, it feels a lot lighter yeah. than the other, other wetsuit I had. Let's try the range of motion. Now, the wetsuit was quite a game changer, because uh, using a wetsuit feels like using cheat codes in a video game. A wetsuit lifts you up in the water, so swimming feels like smoothly gliding on water. I can totally see myself swimming 10 kilometers with this. <laughs> it makes a big difference, a good wetsuit, you know. And with this new wetsuit, I was able to start swimming longer distances in open water. For instance, at our cottage, there's a huge lake. And if you look in the horizon, you can see a small island. Now, one of my favorite swims was to swim back and forth between our cottage and that small island. This sort of open water swimming was totally different than pool swimming. It's, it's a totally different world. There's no one else around and you don't have to worry about turning every 25 meters. Oh, I'm not sure you can see it that well, but look at that sunset. I've never experienced anything like this with swimming. I just feel totally free because there's so much water that I can swim in and then I can just and then I can just see sights like this while I'm swimming. It's amazing. This was also the time when I started focusing more on my swimming technique. A training philosophy I adopted was based on the swim smooth system. One of the most useful tools swim smooth offers was uh, the swimmer archetype classification. Swimmers are classified with six archetypes. The first four archetypes have some mistakes in their technique and the aim is to correct those mistakes and become either a swinger or smooth. Once I classified my archetype, the Swim Smooth book suggested ways for me to fix my technique. And I did my best to correct those mistakes, but I had no coach and I never did any video analysis of my technique. So I was trying to improve my technique by feel. So if I would do it again, I would definitely either uh, hire a coach or at least do some sort of video analysis on a regular basis. And then, as you might know, uh, my Ironman got cancelled due to Corona and I decided to do the Ultraman Challenge. And for this, I devised a new training plan which included some pretty ridiculous swim sessions, like swimming four times 2,000 meters in open water. And then all of this hard work and training culminate, culminate. <laughs> And then all of this hard work and training culminated in the last swimming workout before the Ultraman. Oh, it's pretty the cool. 10 kilometer open water swim. So today we're actually gonna try to swim to the harbor and back. And that's like almost a 10 kilometer swim. But one, one uh, huge obstacle is that it's quite windy. And I'm not sure how tough it's gonna be to swim in, in, in high wind and, and tall waves. So this is what we're working with. So I have a, a swimming boy. Uh, so the boats can see me. And also I'll put some energy gels here so that I can uh, get some carbs during the workout. And then these, these things are, I think, a game changer. These are the Aftershocks X trainers with a lot of Zs. And uh, I can actually listen to music with these while I'm swimming. So I think these will help me cover the distance. And yeah, they're not sponsoring this. Uh, that's, that these are really great. So let's, let's, let's get swimming, shall we? Are getting 
bigger. And that's where I'm going. I can't even see the harbor. Let's continue. More than any other swim I had done previously, this 10 kilometer swim put me into a trance-like state. When you know that you have to swim for three more hours, your brain just kinda shuts down and you lose your sense of time. In addition, I was in the middle of a large deep lake, so I had zero sense of movement. So, weirdly enough, this swim felt kinda like a three hour meditation session, with uh, occasional singing practice. I believe I can fly, I believe I can touch the sky. As it's a body every night and day Where my fling jumps fly away Hello, can I get some of my carb drink? So that's 5,700 meters and 1 hour and 47 minutes. Oh, I need some carbs. No major problems yet. But yeah, my hands are getting tired and I'm getting hungry again. Even though I never said it on video, I was feeling quite lightheaded at this point. I feel like the only reason I was able to muster motivation to continue was because we were filming this whole thing and I had quite a lot of pressure on me. Which, in retrospect, was a good thing. But now, uh, the wind is calming down, so the swim back to our island should be easier. But we're only halfway there, so let's see if I can still make my way back to the island. I'm getting a bit tired, 8.3 kilometers, but also <laughs> So hard to give any comments. Okay, nine kilometers. Final kilometer. Let's go. We are almost there. 500 meters. Three hours and 50 minutes of, of, of swimming. <laughs> yes! Yeah. And I've read that uh, a 10k swim is equivalent, equivalent, equivalent? It's hard to speak at this point. But anyways, I've read that a 10k swim is equivalent to running a marathon. So basically I just swam a marathon six months ago swimming two, just two pool lengths or like 50 meters was a struggle. And now I was able to swim 10 kilometers. I call that progress. Whoa. <laughs> I do feel quite tired now. Do I have those red things on my face? Yeah. Pre do. Pretty clearly? Uh, well, not as clearly on camera, but well, no, actually, never mind. Yeah. It's, oh. it's there. Oh, oh, it's there. All <laughs> right. So, that was it. My first 10k swim. Uh, now I'm gonna go and eat a kilogram of pasta and a liter of pea soup. I'm actually peeing right now. <laughs> I mean, you have to, you have to pee. You can't go and pee on land. So nice. This is, this is pretty nice. No complaints. Beautiful weather and lots of water. <laughs> things I could do. Oh, I'm gonna, I think my voice is okay now. In February I don't know why this is so exhausting. In February 2020. However, swimming however however swimming frequently familiar however swimming frequently I can't say the word